Erev Tov Rabotai, we're continuing with our Mishnah Yumi Mesechet Pe'a. We're up to Perek Vav Mishnah Hey. The Mishnah is going to teach us now that there is a limit to the number of bundles that can be considered Shikha. Shnei Omarim Shikha, Ushlosha Enan Shikha. One or two bundles of forgotten grain are Shikha, but three or more bundles are not Shikha. Meaning if a farmer forgets three bundles in the same part of the field, None of the forgotten bundles are shikha, and he may go back to get them. And then the Falshim explain, if, however, you have bundles that are forgotten in different parts of the field, that scattered in different sections far enough that you cannot harvest them at once, at once, all the bundles are shikha, no matter how many were forgotten in total, as long as there is no group of three bundles together. So... Two bundles or less belong to the poor, but three or more are not shikha if they are together near each other. If they're scattered far apart, then they're considered individuals and they're considered shikha. But if the three are more together, it is not considered shikha. Now, the Mishnah continues to tell us how shikha applies to other kinds of produce that are forgotten in the field, just like it applies to grain. If one forgot one or two heaps of Olives or carbs, it's shikha. Ushlosha in an shikha, but if three or more heaps are forgotten in one place, they are not shikha. Again, carbs and olives, one or two are considered shikha. Three or more in the same spot are not considered shikha. Shnehu tsnefishtan shikha, one or two forgotten stalks of flax are shikha. Ushlosha in an shikha, but three or more, they are not shikha. And the Mishnah introduces to us now another mitzvah, matana for the poor, called peret. Peret is individual grapes that fall off a cluster while it is being picked. Those must be left for the poor, those individual grapes. Shnei gagarim peret, ushlosha enan peret. If one or two individual grapes fall from a cluster, they are peret, they must be left for the poor. But if three or more fall at, at one time, they are not peret, they are able to be retrieved, you are able to keep them for yourself, the owner. Similarly, if one or two individual stocks of grain fall during harvest, when you grab grain with the fi- your fist and use the other hand to cut it with a sickle, or one or two individual uh, grain stocks fall, that is leket. But if three or more fall at once, they are not leket. And the Mishnah concludes, This ruling that three dropped items belong to the owner follows the view of Betilel. But all these items, the carobs, the olives, the bundles of grain, up to three forgotten and dropped items belong to the poor, and only if there are four or more, they belong to the owner. They add one on top of Betilel. Betilel said one or two bundles or olives or carobs that were forgotten belong to the poor. Three or more belong to the owner. Bet Shema increase one. Up to three, one, two or three that were forgotten or dropped have to be left for the poor. Four or more. That's when the owner gets to keep them, and they learn them out from different psukim. Betty that learns it from a pasuk in Seven Vaikra, chapter nineteen, pasuk ten. Le'ani v'lagerta zovotam. You have to leave them for the poor and for the convert. That's two Betty that says. So up to two, you have to leave it. More than three or more, you're able to keep it for yourself. Whereas Bet Shemai learned it from a different pasuk in Sevot Devarim, chapter twenty-four, uh, pasuk nineteen, Chavdal Yutet. You have to leave it, you have to let it be for the convert, the orphan, and the widow. That's three. So you see, one, two, or three, you leave for the poor. Four or more, you get to keep for yourself. Now, that is the end of Mishnah. Mishnah above comes to teach us that besides for the limit of the number of bundles that are considered shikha, there's also a limit on the size of a bundle that can become shikha. Ha'onor sheesh bo satayim ushchacho eno shikha. If a bundle of grain contains the volume of two se'ah and the farmer forgot it in the field, and all shikha is not shikha, because shikha, the Torah says, the Mepharshim explained, the Torah says, Omer shishichacho. When you leave a bundle of grain, then you're not able to go back and retrieve it. Here, however, when it's two se'ah or more, it's not considered an omer anymore, it's considered a gadish, a, a stack of grain, not a bundle, therefore you're able to go back and retrieve it. So again, if a bundle of grain contains the volume of two se'ah or more and the farmer forgot it in the field, and oshichai is not shichai, you're able to go back and get it because it's not considered a bundle anymore, it's considered a stack of grain which you're allowed to retrieve. What about if you have a case where you have two bundles that are next to each other, neither are two se'ah on its own, but combined they're two se'ah. So you have two bundles next to each other that are one se'ah each. 
If they were forgotten in the field, this becomes a machloka. They were forgotten in the same area of the field. So what do we say generally? If you have two bundles in the field next to each other that you forgot about, you must leave it. But what about now if there are two bundles that equal to sat together? A ban gamir says the balabai they belong to the owner, they're not shikha. But the sages say la'anim, they belong to the poor, they are shikha. Rabban Amar Rabban Gamliel, Rabban Gamliel told the Chachamim, V'chim merova omarim, you pikoach shel baal abayit, o hua kucho. When you have more bundles that of grain that are forgotten, does the owner's right to keep them increase, or does his right to keep them decrease? Meaning the more bundles you you forget, is it good for the owner or bad for the owner? Amrulo you pikoacho, the Chachamim answered him, his right to keep them increases. We learned previously, one or two bundles that you forgot, leave for the poor, three or more you get to keep. So you see that the more you lose, the more, I'm sorry, the more you forget, the more you're able to keep it. Amar lem, so Rabban Gambil told the Chachamim, Uma im bezman shu omer echad u bosatayim ushchacho en oshicha, if when there is only one bundle, it contains two se'a, it's not considered shicha, we forgot it. Shnei omarim, u baem satayim, when you have two bundles which combined are two se'a, and no din shlo yu shicha, shouldn't it be logical? You just told me that the more bundles you have, better for you. So here, I don't have... To say individually, but I have it combined. So I have now two factors that should allow me to keep it. I have additional bundles of grain, and I have also the weight. So Rabban Gamil says, When you have two bundles which combine the two se'ah, and no din shloyu shicha, isn't it logical that they shouldn't be considered shicha and you should be allowed to keep them? Amrulo the Chachamim responded to him, Lo, it's not a logical argument. Why? Im amata be'omer chachu kagadish, What's the reason by a stack of grain, by a bundle of grain that you left behind, which is two se'ah, you're able to retrieve it because it's considered a gadish. It's considered a stack of grain, which the Torah does not consider shikha. You're going to say now when you have two stacks of grain next to each other that weigh less than two se'ah to, uh, individually, that it's considered a stack of grain, that's incorrect. They're considered bundles. The whole logic why one bundle which weighs two se'ah you're allowed to keep is because it's considered now a stack. When you have two individual bundles next to each other that weigh less than two se'ah individual, um, individually, they're not considered a stack of grain, it's considered a bundle. So why would you be allowed to keep it? So Chachamim says certainly not since each one is less than two se'ah, they are not, sh- they are, they are, I'm sorry, they are shicha. Chachamim conclude in order to be considered shicha. It has to be less than two se'ah, even if it's more than one bundle. In order to be considered, in order for the owner to keep it, that it's not shikha, it has to be one bundle that is two se'ah or more. That is the end of today's Mishnah. Amen.